So what's one of the fastest ways to waterproof a shower? Well, in our opinion, it's the weedy method using weedy building panels. Now that's not the only option out there, but if you wanna learn how to waterproof a shower fast and easily and do it to make it rock solid, then weedy is a great option for you. So today we're gonna to show you how to use the weedy tub surround kit to waterproof a shower surround. And in the end, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do after you watch our tips and tricks. So, Make sure you watch the video the whole way through because we're going to have other information for you at the end that might be very helpful. So this is the Weedy Tub Surround Kit uh, and what it entails is five sheets of the board, three by five sheets. So this is enough to do a whole tub surround, a typical tub surround with an eight foot ceiling. Uh, it gives you five tubes of the sealant for everything and it gives you the washers and screws, so a hundred of each. So this should all be more than enough to waterproof your tubs around. Uh, another option that you can also purchase, this is in addition to the tub surround kit, is a, is a pre-made niche. This one is 16 by 22. Pre-made niche. And then this is like your, if you wanted to tile a, a shelf, you can do that. But in our scenario, we're actually just gonna install it this way, just like have an elongated shelf now it does say 16 by 22 but that's actually the, the full dimension of the actual unit the actual inside dimension is 12 by 18. so keep that in mind when you purchase this that you're not actually getting you know space for your niche at 16. you're actually only getting 12 by 18. Before you install the niche, you'll want to plan the tile layout of the tub surround or the shower surround. In this case, we mounted the niche about 24 to 30 inches above the tub. That's a standard height for a niche. And we made the tiles be split evenly with the height of the niche. As you see here, Steve made an L notch for the tiles above and below the niche. And this is what it looked like when it was finished. So as you can see here, we planned that out to make sure the grout joint was right in the middle of the niche. The next step is to cut the studs if you have a similar configuration. We use a circular saw first, then a sawzall, and make sure that the stud wall is not load bearing before you do this. That's very, very important. But we're cutting out the studs so that we can fit in the niche. So what Steve is doing here is adding a two by four using two three inch deck screws per two by four to mount it in place. So he's got his two by four above and below the existing structure, places the niche in it to make sure that it's centered and then taps in two by fours in this direction instead of the traditional direction so that he can put in his backer board right next to the prefabricated niche. So again, just using two three inch deck screws per stud for the installation makes for solid insulation. So there you go. Now you give yourself a little bit of wiggle room when you do this and make sure that the, the niche is actually centered. The next step is to tack one quarter inch pieces of plywood to that back wall. Now we're using a roofing nailer. You don't have to use a roofing nailer. You can just use deck screws, two inch deck screws. And the reason why we're tacking this quarter inch plywood to the stud wall is so that we can drop the panel over the tub lip. The, after you do that, you want to apply a nice bead of weedy joint sealant to the tub lip so that you then drop that weedy panel over it. Now you're going to have to notch out for the tub lip as you can see here in the corner. But you'll drop that panel over and then mark the position of the studs on the panel and also the location of the niche on the panel. That way you'll be able to cut out for it. But that's what Steve is doing here and then he applies his first screw six inches above the tub lip so that that lip doesn't bow out a little bit and affect adversely affect the tile job. Then you place your screws and washers every eight to 12 inches after that. We used a fine multi-master oscillating multi-tool to cut out the niche. It makes it so much easier and faster, but you can use a utility knife as well. So as you can see here, Steve is just cutting that to size, applying a weedy joint sealant on top of the panel. So you wanna do this for every single weedy building panel. This will seal the gap or the seam. There's also one additional step we'll go over here in a second. But you place your second panel over top of the first one 
and then you pinch them together using screws and washers. Again, you want a screw and washer every 8 to 12 inches on center on the studs as Steve is doing, and then you can cut out the rest. You can rough cut the rest of that shower niche location. So that's what Steve is doing here for the top panel. Then you place the, the, the prefabricated niche in there, and you just use it as a template to cut out more of the building panel to have a perfect fit. And that's really easy to do with that multi-master. Then apply the weedy joint sealant to all the exposed blue material of the weedy building panel. Place your niche in that recess, and then use a screw and a washer for every corner and you know, like Steve is doing here, it makes it a nice solid installation. The niche isn't going anywhere. Then again, apply your screws and washers every 8 to 12 inches for that second panel. Apply weedy joint sealant on top of it. And then we had to add a little piece of the weedy building panel to complete that main wall. The nice thing about weedy building panels is the ability to cut them using a utility knife. Steve's cutting out this panel for the plumbing wall. He's placing this panel over top of the tub spout, pounding it to mark an indentation on the back, and then cutting out the location of the spout with a spade bit. He did the exact same thing for the mixing valve, but just cut that out with a utility knife. We're using the iBox mixing valve, and it comes with a black bracket, which you want to be flush with the stud so that you put when you put your weedy building panel over top of it, it will set the location of the tile to be within a min-max zone. So Steve is applying the joint sealant to the corner there and also to the top of the, the tub lip or the tub lip itself. He's also applying joint sealant to that black bracket on the eye box and then compressing the weedy building panel into all of that joint sealant to make a nice watertight seal for the shower. Then he's installing his screws and washers every 8 to 12 inches, just like he did for the main wall. Steve repeated this process on the back wall. The weedy joint sealant goes in the corner again and on top of the tub lip because we'll be placing the weedy panel on top of the tub lip, not over it. And that's what we did for the plumbing wall as well. So compress it put the first screw six inches above the, the tub. And then if you have to, you can cut the panel while it's in place to get a nice tight fit with the existing drywall. By the way, we're using half inch weedy building panel, obviously, so it matches up and is nice and flush with that drywall. Steve had to cut out some existing drywall with the Multimaster to fit that panel in place. Again, he just pounded or indented the back of it with the shower arm and then cut out that hole using a spade bit. He dry fit it. Again, had to make some minor cuts with a utility knife, apply joint sealant to the top of that first panel and in the corner, and then place that second weedy building panel over top of the first, and then just evenly spaced out the screws. After we completed the front plumbing wall, we went back to the back wall and added a section of panel. Now we had a little sliver of weedy that needed to meet up with that second piece, and we added the joint sealant to it instead of the top of that second piece of weedy building panel and then screwed it in place. So the nice thing about weedy is you can custom fit it to any size and shape. Because our tub flange Outside of the tub, where it meets up with the drywall, sticks out a little bit, we created a dado there. And then Steve applied some weedy joint sealant to that tub flange and where it met up with the drywall and then placed the weedy over top of that. And that created a nice tight seal and then he just screwed it in place using a few screws and washers. Now on the front plumbing wall, we had to actually split the weedy in half, apply a generous amount of the joint sealant to the flange, the tub flange, and just float that weedy over top of it. We actually didn't screw it in place. Then we added another we need a, a, joint, a joint seal between the weedy and the tub. So we did that for both the front and the back of the tub for watertight seal. Once all the panels are in place, apply weedy joint sealant to all of the corners. In the corner, you want to add a, a lot of the joint sealant. Be very, very generous with it. Uh, that's going to be a spot where you'll also want to flatten it out using the weedy corner trowel. This is only a few bucks. It's well worth it. Makes a nice tight seam. And then apply all the joint sealant to all seams, especially around that niche. And then you just smooth it out using a three inch putty knife. 
And so that will give you a, a nice watertight seal between all of the weedy panels. And then apply joint sealant to the screws and the washers. If you missed any of the screws and the washers, go back and get them. If you created a hole in the weedy um, that went the whole way through the weedy building panel, you'll also want to fill that with joint sealant. Then where the weedy panel meets the tablet, fill in that gap with the joint sealant and then smooth it out using your putty knife. That will create a watertight seal between the weedy build, building panel and the tub. So do that for the back and the front wall. Remember on, on the main wall, we didn't have to do this. We'll go over that in a second. And then we apply weedy joint sealant over top of the Hans Grohe eye box for additional waterproofing. And then where your shower arm sticks out, you want to create a little horseshoe or circular uh, joint seal around that to prevent water from going behind uh, this area. So do the same thing for the tub spout, create just a little dam using the joint sealant. And that way you'll, if any water gets behind the tile, it won't go behind the uh, the wall. So again, for that main wall, we just applied an additional bead of weed, weedy joint sealant between the tub and the panel and then smoothed it out using the putty knife. So a really a really good idea is to make sure that that area next to the tub is watertight using the joint sealant. Now you can apply weedy joint sealant between the building panel and a drywall section. We just didn't do it in this case because it's on the back wall, but you can do that if you want. So this is what our weedy looked like after we were done. It only took us a few hours to do this and that included making a video tutorial. So it's super quick. And we know that all of the tile is waterproof behind it's all waterproof behind this tile this travertine tile in the shower so really great project if you're waterproofing a shower so that's how you waterproof a shower using the weedy method now if you're interested in weedy and you want to learn more about it you can check it out over on bathroomrepairtutor.com and then visit our online store so we, we do sell weedy and the reason why is we've used it on several projects it's rock solid, it comes with a 10 year warranty and many, many other installers respect that process. So we wanted to make it available to you and also help you pick out the right materials for whatever shower you're building. And that's one of the things that we do over on our online store. Before you buy Weedy or any of the other materials, you send us an email, you tell us a little bit about your shower that you're building, uh, maybe you send us some pictures, and then we put together a list of the materials we think could help you out and actually cut down on the cost as well. So you can check that out over on bathroomrepairtutor.com. And also, if you want one of our free online courses, you can click right here to get that, and that'll help you build a shower a lot easier, faster, and better. So again, you click right here to check out both bathroomrepairtutor.com and our free online course. That's it for today. Hopefully this video helped you out and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.